Well, uh, good evening and a warm welcome to you um, for to our midweek devotion, wherever you are joining us from. Um, you know, we are grateful to the Lord for the weather. It's it's warming up a little bit, though still a little bit chilly, but uh, it's warming up and summer is coming. Uh, and that's why even today I, I'm not in a, in a jersey or a jacket. Um, as is our practice, we have a midweek devotion on a Wednesday to follow up on the passage that would have been preached uh, or the message that has been preached the previous week. And this last Sunday, we had a harvest service. Oh, what an amazing and incredible service it was. Uh, it was an, a, real, a real blessing seeing the Lord's people being moved to give, uh, celebrating the harvest. Uh, and thank, thanks to Pastor Gary and Sarah for leading us, for our music teams, for everyone who was there behind the scenes to make that service a success. And thank you all for your faithful giving um, to, to the Lord's work here at Northside. And so today I just wanted to look a little bit uh, about the, the harvest. You know, uh, where do we find this in scripture? Uh, Pastor Gary gave us a summary uh, of the harvest service looking at the series that we have been doing uh, a series on godly living, um, living God's way, in fact. And, and so part of living God's way, he mentioned, is when we carry out his commandments. And one of the things that he requires of us is to give to him. And as he prospers us in our harvest, we give uh, towards the work of God in, uh, in the church, but also even to the vulnerable uh, groups in our community. But we also have been looking uh, on a series um, in the Old Testament about Elijah and Elisha, which we are still in the middle of. Uh, so this coming Sunday, Pastor Gary will be preaching on the call of Elijah, of Elisha, uh, as a successor to Elijah. But we we saw again that there was a prophet who stood for God, because the series is titled Standing for God. And one of the ways in which we can stand for God is through this harvest time, give towards the harvest. I mean, giving towards the ministries of Northside, but also uh, to support the ministries that we are doing even outside of the Northside family itself. And so today I just want to turn um, to Exodus chapter 23, and I'll read verses 14 through to verse 16, giving us a little bit of context about the harvest. And um, the heading here in my Bible is three annual festivals, but I'll concentrate only on, on the harvest. So it says three times a year, verse 14, you are to celebrate a festive a festival to me. Verse 15, celebrate the feast of unleavened bread for seven days. Eat bread without yeast as I commanded. Do this at the appointed time in the month of Abib, for in that month you came out of Egypt. No one is to appear before me empty-handed. So my emphasis comes from verse 15b. No one is to appear before me empty-handed. Celebrate the feast of harvest with the first fruits of the crops you sow in your field. Celebrate the feast of an ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in your crops from the fields. So these are the three feasts that are mentioned in the passage. We have the, the feast of unleavened bread, which is the Passover. Then we have the feast of harvest, uh, where God commands that you celebrate the feast by bringing in the first fruit. But then there is the feast of ingathering where after the harvest now you bring um, stuff to the Lord. And the, looking at uh, the feast of uh, harvest, there are some observations I would like to just make uh, today. The first one is that in that passage it says, none of you shall come to me empty-handed. Meaning during that feast of harvest, God is even assuming or even saying that there will be something that you have. Therefore, you can't come to me empty-handed. You sowed something, and I, the Lord of the harvest, give you the harvest. And when I have done that, take from what I have given you and come to me with it during harvest. So he's, in other words, he's saying no one is too poor to give. Why? Because he's saying, I've prospered you. I have given you, you have sowed something. And me being the Lord of the harvest, they have made you prosper in it. And I'm asking you from what I have given you to take the first fruit of it and give to me. Why the first fruit? 
because he's saying the first fruit is the most important one this is uh, something that is giving you hope that this year we have a bamba harvest you are getting the first fruit and you get that and you say to the lord ah, in gratitude i'm giving it to you and then i'll enjoy the rest and this is the most important part of your harvest to the first fruit where your, your heart is sinking in and saying now i am going to enjoy what i've worked for and he says i would like you to take that very important part of your harvest and give it to me then you can enjoy the rest in other words you will enjoy more you will get more from your harvest than what you are giving to him and we see that an example of this in how god gave you know the word of god tells us in john chapter 3 16 that for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life in that passage it's almost speaking again about this very important being jesus christ his only begotten son and he is giving that only begotten son and then enjoying the other, the rest of his children who are us who come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he gave us the most important being, you know, in the Godhead, they've been living together for eternity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he says, because I've loved you so, so much that I'm giving you my son. Almost like a first fruit. We actually read in the Bible that even Jesus was the first fruit, um, even in the resurrection. But for the resurrection to happen, he had to give his son to come, to live a life which was miserable. God coming to endure the pain of earth, but, at the, but that culminating into his death, and therefore, then later, coming back to life. Right. Um, so again, I want to reiterate the fact that there is no one who is too, uh, too poor to give because we are giving from what God has prospered us with. But why do we give to the Lord? I just want to again talk about, about three things that, or three aspects of why we give to God. The first one is out of gratitude. We give to God because we are thankful. And there are so many things that we are thankful for to the Lord. But with harvest, first, we are thankful for the fact that God he has actually provided for us, for his provision. He has given us this harvest because we understand, you know, when we were doing the, when, whilst we were doing this series we are in, uh, we saw that there was no rain in the land for three and a half years. And there was famine. And the king was looking for the prophet. Why? Because there was famine and he was saying, you are to blame for this famine. They were not prospered in the fields and people suffered a lot. And so, when we sow seed, remember the farmer, they go into the field to prepare the farm, whilst it is, is still in, uh, in the dry season. They are looking forward to some rains. They don't know whether there will be rains or not, but they have faith that there will be some rain. And they, they, they prepare the land and it rains. And they sow seed. It's a seed of faith they are putting in the ground because they don't know whether there will be all conditions equal that they will have a harvest. And now when they see the first fruit, you know, the suspense that was there, the anxiety whether I'm going to get through this is dispelled. And at that moment, God says, now that you know you are going to have a harvest, give me the first fruit. And you are doing so in gratitude because you are now saying, oh, thank you, Lord, for putting all the things needed for this harvest to come by, to be there so much that I'm now getting this harvest. And so we give in gratitude. And there's a lot of things that we are thankful for, except only the crops or whatever work we do. Because when we talk about what we saw, we saw in different trades. Some people are working in, in the industry, some are in commerce. People are in different kinds of things that they're doing to make a living. And God is prospering us in those areas. And therefore, we, we are also giving from what we have sown. But we are also thankful for even our faith that the Lord Jesus came to die for us. Thankful that we are now called the children of God. For we are told that those who believe in Jesus, he has given them the power to be called the children of God. So we are thankful for who we are. First, even for, for waking up to be alive, but also for being alive in Christ Jesus. And also then for the provision that he is giving us. And for that, we say, Lord, we are thankful. Don't forget that we still have a window. We are still in the mood of harvest. And therefore, you can still come to the church or send to the church 
uh, something. Because he says, don't appear to me, don't, don't let come to my temple empty-handed. And therefore, we can actually continue to give uh, in gratitude to what God has done for us. First, that we are still alive even when, you know, the pandemic took others, we are still here. Um, many kind of, kinds of diseases and, and national, natural disasters, many made deaths have been there, people killing one another, but we are still here and we are thankful for that. But not only that, we are thankful that he has made us alive in Christ Jesus. If you are a believer right now, you are in Christ Jesus and therefore there is need to be thankful. And we are thankful by what we give. But also we are thankful for the provision. He has been looking after our families. He has been looking after our church, making sure that those things we need, we have them. We may complain about other things, but some of the things we complain about may not be the needs, but they might be wants. But God has been providing for our needs daily. So in gratitude, we give to the harvest. But we we'll also give out of love for, for the Lord, out of love for him. You all know the first commandment tells us to, to love the Lord your God. And therefore, out of love we give. We see that God himself, because he loved us, he gave. And if we say we love him, we will give him. And so in harvest, we actually give because of our love for God, the first commandment. But also the third thing is we give out of love for others. Because when God calls us to give to him, God is not going to come and eat these things. But he will cause his other his, his creation, other people, to benefit from them. And therefore that is why at Northside when we receive things for harvest, we give towards the vulnerable, you know, our elderly. You know, we have those who come here for coffee club. Through the coffee club we support the elderly. We have food pantry which supports members of our congregation who, who are vulnerable and might be going through uh, a rough patch. We also give to projects like the prison ministry, those who are incarcerated and, and cannot fend for themselves. And we know how our Zim prison are like, prisons are like. And we go in there uh, to, to, to give them a smile. You know, As we do so, we also minister and share the gospel with them. We give to projects like Project 127, where we are going in the, on the, from the 12th to the 15th to be with orphans in Yanga, those who are orphaned. And we, we help you know, run a camp for them to know Christ, but also giving to their physical necessities. And this is how we use this. We are bringing as a smile on someone's face is showing our love for them. So we give to us the harvest to, as, a, as a way to show our love for other people, which is the, the second greatest commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. If your neighbor is in want and you are not in want, if you love them as yourself, you will share what you have. And therefore, that is the reason we celebrate harvest. We don't celebrate it maybe as the way the Israelites did, but we still, in principle, uphold that principle in giving towards the harvest. And so let me summarize the three. Why do we give towards in, uh, during the harvest season? We give in gratitude to God for our lives, you know, being alive, but secondly, being alive in Christ that God gave his son to die for us so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. But also grateful for the provisions. He's giving us our daily needs. The second thing we give, the second reason we give is out of love for the Lord. The first commandment, love the Lord your God. And we are doing so with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our, our strength. And in the strength, the things we work, we come and give to the Lord. And not everything is asking only for the first fruit, that which you value the most. In gratitude and in love, we give it to the Lord, but also in love for others. If we love our neighbor as ourselves, we don't want, to, we don't want them to be in want or in need. Therefore, we extend a hand towards them. The question I have for you is, have you given this harvest season? If you have given, did you give the first fruit? Or did you give the leftovers? We see here, that we need to give of that which is important to us as a show of love for God and a show of love for others, but also in gratitude for what God has done for us. I hope this message will encourage you to give if you haven't. If you have given, it will encourage you to understand why you did it, because maybe you might have done it through just as a way to go through the motions or to do it because the church leaders have asked you to do so. May this be ingrained on your heart. May this encourage you or challenge you that as you give, you give 
in gratitude to God, you give to show your love to God, you give to show your love for your neighbor. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you this evening for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the church here at Northside. Um, it is your church, the church you are building daily and preparing her as a bride that you will present to yourself when you finally return. And so thankful, we are thankful to you again for the harvest. Thank you for those who have um, stretched their hands to give to us the harvest. And we, we pray that everything that we have collected will be a blessing to those who will be ministered by them and help us to be good stewards, to direct every penny, every item that was brought uh, to good use. And I just pray a hand of blessing on everyone here at Northside, for everyone who has managed to give to us the harvest, and even for those who, who did not. Uh, we, we just pray a, your hand of blessing, and all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, I hope uh, you will spend the rest of your evening well. Um, sleep well uh, until we meet again. Bye-bye for now.